Your car is spying on you and you probably don't even know it. Late model cars generate tons of data and law automakers are now finding ways to sell that information to third parties. But who owns that information and should it be sold? Tonight, consumer investigator Steve Sprasia takes a look at the tug of war between convenience and your privacy. Ever since cars were invented, they've been one thing, basic transportation to take you from one place to another. But now, automakers have come up with something new. They're turning cars into money machines that'll continue to generate profits for automakers well after the vehicle is sold. And a lot of folks don't realize it. I mean, this is news to me. I didn't know cars were doing that. The average driver spends 46 minutes a day in their vehicle. All the time, your car's computers are recording how fast you're going, your daily route, even what time of day you might drive by a Starbucks. Did not know that. Uh, that's pretty scary. What we're going to do is pop the hood. Author John Ellis is the former head of tech for the Ford Motor Company. It generates data and it collects data. He says today's vehicles have the power of 20 personal computers and the data they generate is worth money to car makers. With enough data, I can discern patterns that seem to be almost non-existent to the human eye. The worth of car data is growing. A study by McKinsey and Company found that selling vehicle data could generate close to a trillion dollars in revenue by 2030. All companies are looking to put their hands into how could we collect as much information about people as possible possible and how do we monetize it? How do we make money off of it? Automakers are now selling that data. I wasn't aware of that. For some drivers, it raises privacy concerns. I think that uh, we should own that data, not them. I think it should. It should be private. Why? Well, I think I should have decision rights of what, what happens with that data. And in some cases, you do. For example, the data used by mechanics to diagnose the problems with your automobile. See this thing right here? This is the onboard diagnostic port. In 2015, Congress passed a law which said any data collected in this port belongs to the car's owner. But everything else in the vehicle, well, it's fair game. There needs to be clear lines drawn. Consumers need to sign off and, and know and be made more aware and educated on what they're exchanging for privacy and their activities and what do they get for that exchange. General Motors is using that collected data as part of something it calls Marketplace. It's an opt-in service. When you get into your car after you've purchased it, the very first time that you tap the dash, you'd accept other terms and conditions. And we let you know that we may be using the location of your car to serve you. What does it all mean? Well, if you're low on gas, for example, your car's computer will point you to the nearest gas station and allow you to pay for it from the automobile. You can also order food or make reservations, but some drivers aren't sure they want to trade that kind of convenience for loss of privacy. There is that line, and I'm a personal rights, personal freedom kind of gal, so I'm always going to lean towards back off a little. And then there's the question of where does accessing your vehicle's data result in manipulation of your freedom of choice when you're driving? I could see um, the route taken be changed based on driving past certain gas stations on purpose or certain merchants on purpose because maybe those merchants paid more to again get more traffic. Connected cars are here to stay and some experts say we might need legislative solutions to help us control the data that we generate as we go about our business in our personal vehicles. I'm consumer investigator Steve Sprecher. Okay, Steve, thank you.